Hello and welcome. Today you will learn how to use 3D and particles to create this stunning motion graphic in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. This is a recreation of Sondak's tutorial for After Effects. I linked his channel in the description. He has lots of great tutorials and even a few for DaVinci. But enough talking, let's begin. First create a new fusion composition and hit the fusion icon to go into fusion. Add a camera 3D a shape 3D and a renderer 3D node. After the renderer 3D add a background and hit T so the renderer 3D goes into the foreground input. Then set the background color to a dark gray. Then put this in the media out. Before we start let's disable high quality and motion blur so it won't blow up. Good. Now let's adjust the settings. Let's use the right viewer to preview the rendered image and the left one to preview our 3D scene. Also change the renderer type to hardware renderer. First let's change the camera 3D setting. Change the focal length to 25 to get a wider view. Then we have to move the camera back so our shape becomes visible in the rendered image. Next let's change the shape 3D, but first let's enable preview lights in the 3D viewer. We don't want a sphere so let's change the type to cube. And before we change anything let's link the width and the depth so the column will stay perfectly square. Then make the width smaller and make it higher by changing the height. Now bring it down so it's in the center of our rendered image. Add some Y rotation so it looks less flat. Now let's add some camera animation. You can keyframe the Z to add a zoom in, and make it go up a bit by keyframing the Y position. This looks off, but if you enable target the camera will automatically rotate to keep the column in focus. Now you have probably noticed, there are still no lights in the rendered image on the right so let's fix that. Click shift space and add a point light and connect it to the merge 3D. Let's switch to front view to position our light above and slightly to the right of the column. In the 3D viewer make sure you position it inside the camera view, aka the four blue lines. Now we will add a transform node and keyframe the rotation which gives us this orbiting effect. To see the changes we have to go back to the renderer and enable lighting. Then to make the light interact more realistically with the 3D column let's change the fall off to quadratic. Then play with decay rate and intensity. Now let's add the sun. Add another shape 3D and change it to sphere. Then adjust the scale. Next we have to link this to the point light. So pin the point light and click on the shape 3D. Find the position and right click expression and connect the parameters. Now copy the transform 3D from the point light and paste it after the shape 3D. To make the sun pure white, make it not receive lighting by disabling the button. Now is also a good time to make more space. And don't forget to unpin the point light. To add some atmospheric light from below, and add another point light. Move the light below and slightly in front of the column so it's out of view. And again change the fall off to quadratic and adjust the decay rate. To make the light flicker, Add a shake modifier to the intensity and change the smoothness to 3. In addition to that change the maximum to the 3, so it's a bit brighter. Ok next up are the planets. Other than in the original After Effects tutorial we will use particles for them. Before we even add any particles, we will add a shape 3D that we will use then to tell the particles to spawn in that area. Change it to torus and adjust radius and position to where you want the particles to spawn. Now add AP Emitter and AP Render. Keyframe the number in the P Emitter to 10 and then 0 so the particles will only spawn on the first frame. Go to the Region tab, 
Select Mesh and plug in the Shape 3D to the new input. And then connect this to the Merge 3D. Then change the style to Ingon, pick the right one and adjust the scale. I wasn't happy with the spawn area so I went back to the Shape 3D and made it wider. Now all we have to do is copy the transform node from the point light or the sun shape 3D. Also don't forget to adjust the particle lifespan to the comp length so they don't vanish. To fix particle render glitches go to the 3D renderer and change the transparency to quick sort. Ok now let's add the character. Drag in the PNG with alpha of your choice and make it white by plugging it into the mask of a background and changing the color of it to white. When done connect it to an image plane. Now in the 3D viewer go to front view. Scale the image plane down a lot and position it on top of the column. To add a shadow, copy the image plane and change the diffuse color to black and disable the lighting. Change the X rotation to minus 90 and the Y rotation to 90 and reposition it so it looks like a shadow. Now all you have to do add the transform 3D from the point light once again. Last but not least let's add the tiny star particles. Bring in a P emitter and P render. Connect them and to the main merge 3D. Go the first frame and set the number to 700. Go one frame forward and change it back to 0. Then go to region, select sphere and bring the size to 4. Then change the style again to Ingon, and bring down the size and size variance until you have tiny particles that look like stars. Now you can add the ambient light, to make the particles fully bright as if they are glowing. And that is it. As some final touches you can add glow and other effects to it. The preset for the entire comp with the final touches is linked in the description. I hope you enjoyed and see you in the next one.